Okay, so could you solve this math problem without the aid of a calculator? Well, I believe most people out there actually could do this problem without a calculator. And the problem is negative 1 to the 101st power. You want to know what that is equal to. But uh, the key to doing this problem is really having absolute certainty in your answer and doing this in the most direct, efficient path. And there's a couple different ways we can approach this problem. But uh, I really don't want to talk about this right now because I want to give you a full opportunity for you to answer this question. Again, we're not going to use a calculator. So negative 1 to the 101st power, what is that equal to? Well, put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to show you a few different ways you can do this problem or think about this problem without a calculator. And you're going to want to kind of see these various methods because this is really important in solving a variety of different type of math problems, especially in algebra. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and uh, I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so negative one to the 101st power. Uh, let's go and take a look at the answer. The answer is negative one. All right, so uh, I think most of you out there probably got this answer right, but nevertheless, let's go ahead and celebrate your success if you did answer this right. So I'm gonna give you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of evaluating powers without a calculator. They'll be like, wow, that is fantastic. Are you interested in anything other than mathematics? And uh, you'll say, no, I'm obsessed with math. I'm always on YouTube watching that guy. Nevertheless, uh, if you got that right, that's great. Now, some of you got this answer, but you may not be 100% uh, certain that you knew what you were doing. In other words, you got this answer, you feel like it was right, but maybe you felt a little bit like you were guessing, okay? Now, that's what we're gonna be talking about, and we're gonna try to uh, kind of find some ways to really have absolute certainty that this is, in fact, the correct answer. Now, before I get into this, let's just um, talk really quick about um, using your calculator. So for those of you that are maybe math students or um, are interested in figuring out how would I um, answer this question, negative uh, one, to the 101st power on my calculator. Uh, so uh, some of you might be saying, well, no, I got positive one. Well, let's just make sure that you know, in fact, that this is the correct answer, negative one to this question. So uh, on your calculator, uh, when you want it, want, when you want to take a power, okay, other than a squared, uh, typically on most scientific calculators, you'll have an X squared button. So that's, of course, uh, convenient when you want to find questions like, well, let's do something more interesting like three to the second power. Okay, so if you want to find this, you just type in three, hit that squared button, and you could take powers, uh, you could take squares using that specific button. Again, most scientific and graphing calculators will have this button. But if you want to take a power other than a square, a higher power, you'll need uh, to look for this particular button. So in general, I would say most calculators have this. It's an upside down V, it's called a caret. So this is what you hit. So in this particular case, you would do negative one. And of course, to uh, create a negative one on your calculator, there's a little other button. It looks like a positive negative sign, something like that, or maybe a negative like that. You have to hit that thing to create a negative one. And to be on the safe side, you want to actually use parentheses. So you'll, you'll have parentheses on your calculators as well. So using your calculator is a whole nother kind of topic in and of itself. But anyways, you can use this button to um, create your power. So what we would type in is parentheses, okay? Then we would hit that little positive negative uh, deal to create a negative one. We type in one and then an end parentheses. And then you're gonna either hit this button, the caret button or like a, a button like Y to the X or X to the Y, okay? So it's one of these uh, three buttons. Then you'd hit 101 and then enter and you'll see you'll get a negative one. 
Okay, so some of you out there that uh, are, you know, even unsure how to use your calculator to answer, to answer a question like this, it's important that you know, and hopefully this little mini lesson helped you out. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the problem. And uh, the actual solution is what? Well, it, what we have to do here is take negative one and take it to the 101st power. But what does that mean? Well, we have to take negative one and multiply it by itself 101 times. So we have here uh, 101 negative ones, right? So <laughs> one, a negative one, negative one, neg negative one, and then on and on and on. And then here is our last negative one. So we have a total of 101 negative ones. So this becomes one gigantic big product uh, to figure out. And at this point, some of you might be saying, okay, well, I can do this, but what your brain is probably going to be telling you is, I know I want to try to uh, you know, uh, look for patterns here, right? Because we're using the same number uh, we're, we're, and you want to kind of look for repeating patterns and that is exactly uh, a good approach to do. Now, some of you, uh, you know, hopefully none of you out there actually did all this multiplication, okay? But if you did, you know, of course you would have uh, got the right answer of negative one, but maybe some of you, uh, some of you out there might be like, well, negative one times negative one is a positive one, okay? And I have a negative one times the next negative one, right, right here. So this is now a positive one. And maybe you're looking for patterns to make this easier. Well, that is great thinking. So let's go ahead and kind of explore some patterns here uh, to help us kind of answer this question without you know, multiplying 101 negative ones. So let's take negative one squared. Okay, what does that mean? Well, you're going to take negative one and multiply it by itself, right, two times. Uh, so negative one times negative one, uh, this is a positive, right? Remember, a negative times a negative in math is a positive value. Okay, so negative one squared is positive one. How about negative one cubed? Well, we're going to take negative one and multiply it by itself three times. So now we have a negative one times negative one. This is a positive one times a negative one gives us a negative one because a positive times a negative is negative. All right, so negative one cubed is negative one. And we can kind of confirm these results. We see this, right? So we're kind of, you know, trying to look for patterns that can help us out uh, to answer this question. All right, about, how about negative one to the fourth? Well, here we have negative one times negative one times another negative one times negative one. Of course, this is four negative ones. Now, if we look at this, we're, we're just going to try to be smarter about the patterns here, right? So we already know that negative one times negative one is a positive one. So this is a positive one. This is a positive one. So positive one times positive one is a positive one. And then over here, I have negative one to the fifth. All right. So when I multiply all these negative ones right here, again, we have po uh, uh, negative one times negative one. This is positive. Negative one times negative. This is positive. So positive times positive times negative is going to be negative. But let's make some observations here. It appears that when we when we take negative one to an even power, we get positive one. And when we take negative one to an odd power, we get negative one. And as we kind of run our little experiments here, you can see that this is kind of um, uh, playing out, right? Negative one to the fourth, which of course is even, is positive one. Negative one to the fifth is negative one. And then here, my last little uh, example is negative one to the sixth. Now, at this point, you would be like, well, this should be a positive one because it's an even power, but we can kind of confirm that, right? Negative one times negative one, negative one times negative one, negative, ne negative one times negative one. So this is positive, positive, positive. So we end up with positive one. All right. So at this point, you know, we, we're kind of coming up with this, uh, you know, formula, if you will, or this observation that negative one to an even power is positive one and negative one to the, an, an odd power is negative one, okay? So this is outstanding, right? We could take this pattern and we can apply it to our problem. So let's go ahead and do that now. So when I'm looking at the actual problem here, I've got, well, negative one to the 101st, well, 101 is an odd number, so my answer is negative one. And that is correct, okay? So that would be a great way, but some of you, uh, might feel a little bit uh, maybe uncertain, right? Like, well, how do I know that this pattern is, in fact, you know, continues on, right? So let's suppose you weren't quite confident 
in your answer, well, you can use a, a different approach uh, that will give you more confidence, and it's a technique that you're going to want to uh, know and use, especially for those of you out there that are studying algebra. So I'm going to show you that technique, but before I show you that, I'm going to show you this, which is uh, my invitation for you to, uh, to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button. Uh, I'm just going to tell you right now, my objective is to try to reach as many people as possible that are interested in learning math or struggling with mathematics. We're like in a, a crisis, if you will, in terms of math. So many people struggle with math, and unfortunately, uh, you know, things seem to be getting uh, worse. But I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell you, okay? 99.999% of you uh, can be super successful in math, okay? But what you need is great math instruction, and that's what I'm passionate about. But anyways, by you subscribing, it really does help uh, me individually, and it helps kind of grow my classroom. So thank you so much, and make sure to hit that notification button so you can get my latest videos. All right, so back to the problem. So I'm going to show you a different approach uh, to use to answer this question that involves some rules of powers and exponents, okay? So uh, in mathematics, especially in algebra, okay, you really do use, you really use a lot of powers and exponents, and there are some rules to powers and exponents. I'll just kind of write a few here algebraically. Uh, these may not uh, make sense to you, but it's stuff that you absolutely need to know, okay? So just write some things down. These are... Um, what we call properties of powers of uh, powers and exponents. And for those of you that are taking maybe an algebra course or are interested in studying um, algebra, I'm just kind of writing some down here. Uh, let me see here. A to the zero is one. Okay, I think I wrote all these down. These are things that you want to commit to your long-term memory. Now, you know, these properties here, uh, some of you might be saying, I don't understand where this guy is going. Well, listen. If you haven't seen these before, or if you don't recognize what I'm doing, no problem. I'm going to kind of introduce you to some of these properties. Uh, but you absolutely need to understand how to work with powers and exponents to be successful in mathematics. But I'm going to show you how easy this problem can be using some of these properties. Okay, so the first thing is the following. I'm going to look at this problem this way. I have negative 1 to the 101st power. I'm going to break this problem up in uh, this manner. So I'm going to have negative 1 to the 100th power times negative 1 to the first power. Okay, now there's a property that states that when you are multiplying powers with the same base, okay, the base, uh, if I have like 2 to the 4th, this is the base. So if I'm multiplying uh, things with the same base, okay, a multiplication again, what I can do is simply add the exponents, right? This is a power uh, of... Um, property of exponents. Matter of fact, it's indicated right here. So A is the same base. But even if you don't understand this, you know, hopefully intuitively you can kind of see that, oh, okay, yes, when the bases are the same, and, and uh, in this case right here, the bases are the same, and we're doing multiplication, all we need to do is add the exponents. So uh, negative 1 to the 100th times negative 1 to the first is going to be uh, equal to negative 1 to 101 plus 1. I'm sorry, 100 plus 1, which of course is 101. Now, why would I write my answer, uh, or why would I kind of, um, you know, break up the problem, or write the problem into two, like a two separate pro uh, products, right, or a product right here of two separate factors, right? Why would I do that? Well, because I'm going to use a little math trick here that you're going to need to know. It's a technique that, uh, you know, maybe some of you have never thought of, but it's a great technique, and you will need to use it in your kind of algebra studies. All right, so just to kind of make this rule clear, when we're multiplying powers with the same base, again, uh, I have 2 to the third power times 2 to the second power. The bases are 2. They are the same. All I have to do is add the exponents. That's equal to 2 to the fifth. And that would make sense, too, because 2 uh, to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2. 2 to the second power is 2 times 2. So all this right here is 5 twos. Okay? All right. So what am I going to do next? Well, I'm going to use another property of exponents, okay, powers and exponents, and here we go. So I have negative 1 to 100 times negative 1 to the first. This is my question, okay, I'm trying to find out what negative 1 to the 101 is, but I'm breaking it up in this manner. Now I'm going to take this negative 1 
to the 100, I'm going to write it in this manner. Negative 1 squared, all of that to the 50th power. Okay, so I'm not going to mess with this, but negative 1 squared, all that to the 50th power is equal to negative 1 uh, to the 100th power. Now, you, you might be saying, well, it looks like this 50, if I multiply it by that 2, uh, you know, I get back to 100. Is that a property of powers and exponents? Indeed it is, okay? When you take a power to another power, okay, what you could do is take that outside exponent and multiply it by that inside exponent, and uh, there you go. So we're kind of factoring, but I'm doing this for a very specific reason, okay? Now, let's just be clear that you understand this rule. So 2 squared, for example, to the third power is equal to what? 3 times 2 or 2 to the 6. But let's just kind of convince ourselves that this is uh, right. So 2 squared is uh, to, uh, to the third power is 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared, right? 2 squared times itself 3 times. Now we're down to this multiplication, right, with the same basis. So what do I do? Well, I have to add the exponents. 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. Okay, so again, if you have strong, you know, uh, skills and understanding of, of, of uh, powers and exponents, then you can, you know, use this stuff and you'll absolutely need to use this in algebra. Okay, all right, so now let's go down and take a look at why I did this. Okay, so negative one squared, this I can have absolute certainty what this is equal to, right? Negative one squared is negative one times negative one. It is a positive one. All right, for sure, I know that. So really, negative 1 squared to the 50th is the same thing as a positive 1 to the 50th power. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, positive 1 to the 50th power simply just means take positive 1 and multiply it by itself 50 times. 1 times itself, a uh, positive 1 times itself, we're not going to have to worry about what the sign is. It's going to be positive, right? So 1, positive 1 to the 50th is for sure positive 1, and then negative 1 to the first power is just itself, so that's negative 1, so a positive times a negative is a negative 1. Okay, so that is another technique you could have uh, used. I would uh, uh, probably, most of you out there didn't maybe uh, use this approach, but this particular way will um, help give you more confidence in your answer. But even if you use kind of this pattern approach, that's good too, okay? So in mathematics, you want to look for patterns, but you kind of want to back up those patterns with other things, okay? So sometimes, you know, you see patterns, you're like, well, I believe the pattern is pointing, you know, to this as being the answer, uh, but, you know, oftentimes, you know, you're uncertain that you actually have the correct answer. So you want to have kind of other tools to justify your conclusions. But uh, this technique that I showed you, working with powers and exponents, comes up again in algebra. I know I'm being redundant there, but um, if you've never seen that before, try to remember that because that is a great little tool. Now, if you want to um, kind of improve an area of powers and exponents and things like that, uh, I'm going to give you a couple of suggestions. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel you can check out. But uh, I introduced this topic in uh, my pre-algebra course. So if you're a pre-algebra or algebra one, I'll leave links to those uh, courses in the description below. But uh, with uh, all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.